afternoon at this time of year. So uh, when I'm not speaking, I will definitely uh, mute myself. Um, this has been a, a, a series that we've been doing, as I said, for 20 months, that we will continue to do uh, at least until the end of the campaign or we die first. And, and these days it looks like maybe we'll die first uh, given the stress involved in all of this, but that, that has been our intent and, and we're sticking with our intent. And the second part of our intent always was to focus on ideas and issues, not so much on the personalities or the handicapping, the horse race or anything of that. It's just what are the issues in the center? What are the unifying issues that the center believes Columbia needs to address now and moving forward? Um, so we are, we're very excited today to have with us several experts. Um, we have Silvia Gloria de, de Vivo, she's a professor and ex-dean of the Law of Political Science and International Relations at Uni Universidad del Norte en Barranquilla. Um, gracias, Silvia, por estar con nosotros. Uh, Santi Londoño is ex, he's an ex-city councilman from Medellin, ex-secretary of government Antioquia, both in administrations of Sergio Fajardo. He's been acting as an advisor to the Sergio Fajardo campaign. And so he's going to be extremely busy for the next several months. Um, we also have Gabriel Silva, who hasn't joined us yet, but we expect will shortly. He's a founder and a columnist of the new magazine called Cambio, ex-ambassador of Colombia to the United States, and has been a senior advisor to the campaign of Juan Manuel Galan. And he will hopefully be joining us from Bogota. And the fourth panelist is Juanita Gobertas, who you also would have seen from our prior events, uh, as you would have Gabriel, who is a congresswoman, very prominent congresswoman, and she's been a member of the campaign for Alejandro Gaviria for president. Uh, the, the, she's still a congresswoman, as I mentioned, so um, she's in session now in Congress. She hopes to be able to join us um, as soon as she can. So we would look forward to that. And of course, uh, last but certainly not least, Ana Cristina Restrepo, who's been our co-moderator for I don't know how many episodes now. Ana Cristina, she's a columnist at Espectador and El Colombiano, a commentator on Blue Radio, widely read and widely listened to. So Ana Cristina, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ken. This is such a pleasure. And thank you for all the panelists uh, who are with us uh, today and all the people who joined this meeting. I would like to start with the first question with uh, Professor Silvia. Uh, Silvia, at the end of the day, if we think about all the messages that were delivered, what would you say that were the three main messages that the center delivered uh, on this uh, last Sunday? Muy buenas tardes, Ana Cristina, muy buenas tardes para todos. Yo creo que, que no hubo tres mensajes, yo pienso que hubo cuatro y fueron muy importantes, los que dieron no solamente el domingo, sino durante la campaña. Yo creo que el centro se enfocó en eh, un proyecto conservacionista de las instituciones colombianas, de la institucionalidad del Estado colombiano. Creo que el centro se concentró en la necesidad imperiosa que hay de combatir la corrupción, que es, digamos, un, el, el flagelo más importante que identificaron en el, en el, en el quehacer de la política colombiana. Eh, un tercer mensaje que da el centro, eficacia en la gobernanza, es decir, todo el equipo del centro era un equipo, digamos, con las credenciales de formación y las credenciales del de, eh, eh, ejercicio de la gobernanza de lo público, eh, y, y, y transmitieron una promesa de, digamos, desde de el conocimiento y desde de la reflexión, eh, hacer un ejercicio eh, de gobierno eh, eficaz, es decir, que pudiera lograr resultados. Y un cuarto y último eh, mensaje eh, del centro fue el foco en la equidad social. Cuando el centro plantea el foco en la educación, en una educación para en las oportunidades, yo lo que veo es, digamos, vamos a quitarle el foco a, 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 digamos, a, a unos elementos en los que los gobiernos anteriores venían focalizados, el tema de seguridad inclusive, eh, eh, aunque, aunque aparece importante en las propuestas de todos los candidatos, sí cambia de prioridad para dar prioridad a las demandas sociales. Yo pienso que el centro... Eh, estuvo, estuvo leyendo la, 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 la inconformidad social 
artista, estuvo leyendo los movimientos sociales y estuvo refocalizando en esa, en esa idea de darle un, un nuevo horizonte a la política colombiana concentrado en la equidad social. Creo que ahí, se, ahí, se, ahí, ahí están los mensajes, digamos, los mensajes del centro. Esos son los que yo veo. Uh, what about you, Santiago? Do you agree or you have some other messages? Well, hi, Anna. Good afternoon, Ken, Sylvia, uh, to everyone who is with us. Well, I think that um, what Sylvia uh, is saying is, uh, is basically right. I would add that uh, the center moved in a cautious way, maybe too cautious, in a country who is really tired right now who is doubting about the democratic institutions in a way and who wants change. And, and what I've felt when I've been in the street and I've been around the, the, the country is that people are quite tired of what uh, democracy has been looking like in Colombia for a while. Um, and that's why they are looking for change. And I believe that the center is a very responsible and structured change. Uh, but I believe that the communication strategy and the message has to be much more on point and has to be much clearer, direct to the point. It has to say change is inevitable, inevitable but not every change and not all change is what the country needs, but change will come. And, and I believe that the, 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 the center, whether it be the Fajardo, Gaviria, uh, Robledo, Amaya, and Galan, or our candidates, the candidates in, in Congress uh, had some important points, but I believe that these uh, weeks that are coming until uh, the first round, Primera Vuelta, Uh, the, the message has to be much stronger, much more direct, and it has to focus on a lot of groups, different groups within the country that are, are quite tired of what our democracy looks like right now. Well, um, okay, let's, let's go through that. I guess the question was, do you think it was clear to the voters what the messages were? I mean, I, I guess we'll go back to Santi, uh, Santi and then e, e, and then go to, to uh, Gloria on what her view was, right? There was one candidate, you know, Alejandro Gaviria, who had six, a 60, more or less, a manifesto, as it were, of 60, right? And each candidate had pet ideas, we heard of, you know, and there are a lot of things in common, very, very many things in common. But through the, all these episodes we went to, there was, you know, the social equity issues, the, the, discussion of tax reform, discussion of serious reform needed in, in, the, in the agrarian sector, the glyposato, uh, strengthening the implementation of the peace accord, protecting social leaders. You know, uh, you know, we could go on and on in a number of them, but through all of that, did the public at the end of the day know what, what the main messages were of the centro? The problem was not a lack of topics or themes or analysis. I think it was a clear, it, it was basically that the message was not one message and that they saw that these five people with a lot of experience with very important proposals with a view about a country that can work were not, um, they were not uh, on the same rhythm. <laughs> I think that that was a problem. They were not on the same rhythm. The, the message was there in, in, at the end, but the, the form, the rhythm, and the way to you know, bring it to the, to, the, to the public and to the citizen, I believe that it, was, um, it, was, it had some problems. And I think that the result finally showed that. And, but I think that that is something that is not final. That, that doesn't mean that there is no space for the center. I believe that the space for center politics is more important right now than it was uh, before. Uh, but I believe that uh, the, 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 the decision made uh, 
by the voters that Fajardo uh, is going to be the candidate is a message that we see experience, we see good results, we see that uh, the center can and definitely will do uh, what it says it will and that it has done it before, but that has to be a single voice with various interpreters. And I think that that did not happen. Silvia, is it a was it a problem of uh, lack of focus of certain issues, uh, and just wasn't communicated? Possible is it that the public wasn't interested in hearing those issues, um, and was concentrated in thinking about other things? What's your view about that? Yo creo que Colombia es un país muy diverso. Es un país complejo. Y la composición social del país debe orientar el mensaje del político. Eh, creo que en Colombia hay muchísima gente que no tiene formación y no tiene formación de ningún tipo. Y hay mucha gente en el país que tiene formación, eh, pero tiene una formación muy poco crítica. Es decir, eh, eh, una formación muy chapada a la antigua, diría yo, en la que tragaron entero discursos durante todo el tiempo y fueron a las, a las aulas sin, sin someter a la crítica lo que les decían y se creyeron todos esos cuentos. Esos son parte de, de la sociedad, es parte de la gente que hace, que hace, que hace estructura social, que hace, que hace comunidad. Y yo creo que el discurso del centro fue un discurso complejo, complejo porque había muchos candidatos, complejo porque el lenguaje era complejo, complejo porque los temas de Estado son temas complejos. Y siento que la política es pasional. Eh, los extremos generan por naturaleza pasiones. Es decir, para ellos no es, ningún, no, no es descubrir el agua tibia generar pasiones. Y uno lo ve en los discursos extremos, cómo fácilmente generan la pasión de la gente. Yo siento que el centro en el discurso no encontró o no ha encontrado de qué manera generar esa pasión. Y la política necesita generar esa pasión. Es decir, yo no puedo explicar a, a, a fondo cómo voy a hacer cada cosa, porque solo me va a entender una porción muy pequeña de la población, que es la que finalmente me vota. Entonces, yo sí creo que hay un problema en el mensaje. Entonces, yo, ¿cómo veo yo las cosas? Yo veo aquí eh, unas personas, eh, eh, digamos, que han votado a, a, a Fico Gutiérrez, y estas personas que han votado a Fico Gutiérrez tienen muy grande al cambio, tienen un temor muy grande a que nos pase lo que le pasó a Venezuela, y tienen un temor muy grande a, a, digamos, a quien tiene privilegios perderlos, a quien ha trabajado, digamos, por escalar en la, en la, en la pirámide social, a perder ese escalamiento, a que nos igualen a todos, eh, le apuestan a la libertad, al orden, a la seguridad, digamos, al a, 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 a balance que todo ser humano necesita, ¿verdad?, están acá los, los votantes de Petro. Entre los votantes de Petro, ¿quiénes están? Los desesperanzados, los que han sentido que no han tenido oportunidades, que se sienten que, no, que, que el sistema no les, no, les, no les representa una garantía de oportunidad y piden un cambio. Y adicionalmente, todos los cambios a medias no les sirven, les sirven un cambio estructural, inclusive si es violento. No importa que sea violento el cambio, ese cambio lo, lo, lo están pidiendo. Esa, es, es como yo veo esa, 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 ese, ese pedido de estas personas. Y entonces está el centro, que realmente yo veo que el centro centro no existe. Existe un centro derecha y un centro izquierdo, y de hecho hoy, hoy yo veo que están divididas las, las, las posiciones, inclusive del centro, unas que van más hacia la izquierda, unas que van más hacia la derecha, pero que nos ayudan a construir, digamos, un, un equilibrio que no es tibio, que es, digamos, es una combinación de cosas que también es posible. Y en ese centro, el mensaje es, hagamos cambios, se necesitan cambios, reconocemos cuáles son los cambios, pero hagámoslos despacio, porque este país ha sido violentado durante toda su historia republicana, y este es el momento, este no es un momento, digamos, en donde tengamos que imprimirle más violencias y más, más fuerzas a esto. Estamos pro libertad, pero priorizando lo social. Entonces, yo lo que creo es que, eh, eh, digamos, el discurso, el, el, el potencial del discurso es mucho, pero ¿dónde está el clic de comunicación que tenemos que lograr eh, desde ese centro para poder, digamos, eh, 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 llegarle a la gente, llegarle a la pasión de la gente? Y no solamente a una gente que lo entienda, sino a toda la gente, 
a la gente que está en este extremo y a la gente que está en este otro para, para digamos, venderle la idea de una, eh, de una propuesta que agrupe, que una. ¿Cómo lo hacemos si tenemos cinco personas? ¿Cómo lo hacemos si entre las cinco personas estamos peleándonos y estamos discutiendo? Entonces, un poco incoherente, digamos, la forma en que se presentó. Entonces, yo sí creo que los votantes votaron eh, a quienes entendieron lo que estaba en su, en su, en su deseo eh, y no votaron a quienes no entendieron. Well, And, oh, ok. Ana, no, go on. Go go, no, go oh, on. I was just going to say that, that people have to know and understand that this, the, this center coalition is an experiment and it's a quite new experiment because we have uh, five uh, very different people and uh, different political groups. If you see their history, if you see what, they, what they've done, I think that getting together was really a very important message at, at first. And it is a very first, a first step, which is important. People tend to think that this is natural, that this is how politics happens and it's not true. It's easy to get together when you are pragmatic and you say, we have to stop Venezuela and let's get together. So a lot of people will get together because fear is right there. There is no questions about principle, ethics, morale. No, no, that's not on the table. On the other side, we need change, radical change because nothing here works. And everybody who wants change, fast and radical will go in there they don't talk about ethics they don't talk about you know uh, the, the 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 program uh, uh, structurally they want a big change and they know how to communicate it when you are in the center and you get together for the first time you really have and, and you get together watch this around principles which is not easy because you really have to sit down and talk about what you understand as good politics and who do you do politics with? Who among all these, you know, ecosystem of politicians in this country, who are the ones that represent the principles that you stand up for and those who are really representing the old politics, clientelismo, politiqueria, which as Silvia said is at the center of the center's, you know, uh, uh, topics. You know, you have to go against how you do politics if you want to change the country. It's not as you do politics any which way, and then when you are in power, you're a real good transformer. You know, you're you understand and you make profound structural changes. That is impossible. You will not be. Uh, 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 a really transformative politician if you are doing politics with clientelistas, politiqueros, you know, which uh, with, with the, the, the old guard. The old guard, uh, they are there to do business. They are very good at doing business and they will go anywhere they, well, you, we've talked about Cesar Gaviria, you know, the Liberal Party, right now can go anyway, basically with Fico on the right and Uribe or with Petro. They're just waiting, they're negotiating. Well, the center says no way, you know, that is not the way to transform this country. You cannot do, um, you cannot govern in a different way if you uh, govern with, the, with people who have been there always and who are, you know, accustomed to negotiating principles. So getting together was very important. It is hard, it was hard, we saw it. And we are now, you know, at the point where they are together and they're saying, okay, we are in the first round. We are uh, an option. We are a different option. We have to give that option hope, you know, esperanza, because When you're fighting against fear on one side and radical change on the other, I believe that the emotion is hope, but you have to make hope something which is worthwhile, but also attainable, you know? People have to see that that is 
probable and that that is close and near. I think that that is the real question right now. Okay, thank you, Santi. I, I wanna follow up with that. Um, I wanna introduce Sergio Guzman, the founder of Columbia Risk Analysis, uh, and certainly for our money, one of the best, if not the best political analysts in all of Colombia. Uh, who's listening and so we invited him to sit in with us and he graciously accepted so thank you um uh, Sergio I know you you've been listening but just to to go back a little bit we started the conversation on you know, the uh the very many ideas that were coming out of the Centro Esperanza as we mentioned one candidate had a manifesto of 60 issues and the like Santi was just talking of we've been exploring it did any of those issues matter to the electorate um, did they hear them? Uh, and if not, then how do you refine a campaign going forward so that th it resonates, the, the, the key issues resonate with the voters? So with that intro, <laughs> let me ask you, and then and, um, this is where it's tying it into what, what Santi just said. If in fact, you're talking about the issue of hope, and not fear and, and you know, between uh, you know, various levels of, of fear on, on the various sides or the old guard, it's, however it wants to be characterized, what issues would you suggest the center could use to hang hope on? What, 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 how do you interpret hope through issues or you, do you not? It's just a question of, of creating an atmosphere and the, and the ideas that we've been discussing for, 20 months sort of take a back seat. Yeah, no, I look, look Ken, first and foremost, thank you for that generous compliment. I, I don't think I am Colombia's best political analyst. I'm certainly one of the younger ones. Um, but I will say this, I think um, this, the starting line of the election is now. I think if you look at where the 2010 election started, the Ola Verde uh, started, it was after the congressional elections. If you look at where President Ivan Duque got his start uh, as a serious contender for the presidency, it was after the, the congressional elections. And so the election started on Monday, right? Uh, arguably, Petro started the election eight years ago, but that's a, a whole nother issue. Uh, and Petro, immediately the first day after the election, he started, you know, campaigning against Ivan Duque. And so he has a market advantage over, over others. I think that mistake has been acknowledged by the Centro Esperanza coalition. I think, you know, keeping pummeling them on this is, is, is not going to lead us anywhere productive. But what I do think is that the center of gravity of the election has fundamentally changed. I don't think this election from now on can be about Gustavo Petro and about what Gustavo Petro's record is. Because this election is not about winning uh, in the first round and it's not about winning the first round, to be completely honest. It's about coming in second. And who you need to race now is Federico Gutierrez. And as the representative of the incumbent government of Ivan Duque, um, that's who you're campaigning against now. You're not campaigning against Alejandro Gaviria and the potential deals uh, that he made with questionable characters. You're not campaigning against Gustavo Petro's lack of planning and very poor um, you know, communication about what his precise policies are. You're not campaigning about, against Rodolfo Fernandez, whose ideas are, are, are completely um, unrealistic. And so I think that if the center can agree to campaign against the incumbent, they have a fighting chance. But, and this is, this is gonna be hard for Santiago to hear, um, you have to leave it all on the table. Uh, you, you have to take the gloves off. Because if Fajardo sort of is Fajardo, uh, then, then counterintuitively, this campaign is not going to be um, against the, the government or against anybody. So I think, I think that the, the center has a chance they have the steepest hill to climb out of all the different campaigns. Um, everybody loves a comeback story, as unlikely as it is, uh, I think. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I certainly think that Federico Gutierrez doesn't have it in the back for him. I think in, in a runoff election against Gustavo Petro, 
the radical change that Gustavo Petro is promoting uh, wins by very large margins. And that's not just Sergio Guzman saying it, that's all, every single poll uh, there is that, that says that. And, and you know, to a certain degree, um, if, they can, if, if the campaign can get the electors to understand how that choice is being made, they, they, they stand a chance of being successful. Uh, not a good chance. We're, we're putting a Petro victory at 60% right now. Uh, but, but, and, and a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, he's not going to be all, all powerful and almighty in Congress. So what's the worst that could happen? And I think that, that, that um, you know, within the center, they need, to, they need to come to an agreement on that. Um, I don't know what the position is going to be on Ingrid Betancourt's campaign, but this race is also going to be won on the margins. So as much as, as much as they're going to be campaigning for a thick of voters who disagree with the current government and may not want to be, be with Petro, they're going to have to find a solution to some of these problems if they want to, to stand the fighting chance. They don't want to be you know, 40,000 or 100,000 votes short of making the, the second place. Um, so you have to put it all on the table. I think that right now we can emphasize on ideas and I, I would like to know uh, from you guys, if you think that ideas can lead the conversation now before the first round, that's the first part of the conversation uh, of the question. And, and the second is what those ideas should be, what uh, should be those main ideas. And if you think that these dangerous ideas like abortion, like uh, regulation of drugs, like euthanasia, should be in the center of the conversation or we should put them on the side? Let's start with Santiago. Well, first of all, I, I, I agree with Sergio. I know that um, the, the race is against the incumbent government and FICO has said directly that he admires Duque and he has never ever criticized this government. So I think that that is clear. I think that the, the, the gloves have been coming off, you know, it may be not as fast as they should, but I think that they have, and it has to be much more direct. And we have to have all voices, all voices from the center with the same rhythm. I go back to rhythm because it is very important. People start to, you know, dance when the rhythm is really hitting them when they need energy and they need voices to be at the same you know, pace and the center has to start speaking with the same rhythm. To talk about uh, Anna's question, uh, I think that the, the ideas are gonna be there. They're, they're gonna have, I don't know how many debates. The debates of course are gonna talk about abortion. They're gonna talk about, um, energy and what we're going to do with oil they're going to talk they, they will talk about uh, other stuff like pensions we saw that in the first debate but i believe that this is going to move around emotions and it has to you know we have to send a message very quickly and i and i also agree with sergio that we are in time of doing that that um first of all fico will lose against Petro, that is very clear, very clear. We are not in 2018. 2018 was very different from now. Ivan Duque and his government have, you know, uh, have made Urivismo and uh, that kind of uh, right-wing government a uh, very fragile, a very, very fragile, you know, uh, proposal. And people will never, I believe, and in, 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 in I think the polls are saying that, will never go for, well, we're that scared, so let's go with this guy because it's all we got. That will not happen. And that is a message that the center has to, you know, has to be very clear on. But that has to go in, hand in hand with emotion and with very good debates so that people say, this guy, Fajardo, he knows what he's talking about. He has been in government. He has some very good experience. He has results. He is not Duque and he can beat Petro. That is a central message. He can beat Petro. We will get a big chunk of center right and center left with that message on point. 
Silvia, what do you think? And, and let's talk a little bit more about those uh, questions on uh, civil rights. When we, when we talk about abortion or those topics that are very emotional, and of course, uh, the left and the right, they take a very, like a very strong position, but then what the center should do about it. Yo creo que esos temas realmente no le suman al debate político porque son temas que distraen y son temas que generan pasiones eh, y se está de acuerdo o no se está de acuerdo con ellos. Es decir, son temas que mueven, que mueven, que mueven gente, eh, pero creo que en esos temas, digamos, si hay inquietudes sobre las posturas de los candidatos sobre esos temas, hay que ser contundente, es decir, hay que contestar, hay que responder. Pero yo también creo que las ideas que, que yo presenté como las ideas que yo como ciudadana recibo del centro son ideas poderosas, son ideas eh, de transformación. A mí lo que me parece, y es una, una percepción personal, personal, lo digo como ciudadana, me parece que el entendido de la política tal vez es que es una política para ángeles. La política en Colombia no es una política política para ángeles. Nosotros no podemos decidir en Colombia hacer política sin los que han participado siempre en la política, porque eso no lo vamos a poder hacer. Entonces, yo creo que, digamos, que, que, que esa investidura de superioridad moral eh, que tiene el centro con la que estoy de acuerdo, porque, digamos, yo me siento así, me siento una mujer honesta, me siento, eh, eh, digamos, que estoy en contra de la corrupción, eh, eh, me gusta la tecnocracia, me gusta que la gente llegue a los cargos por, por su capacidad, eh, me gusta el foco social, es decir, eh, digamos, estoy como persona comprometida con muchas de esas ideas, pero creo que el país es más complejo que eso, y que yo no puedo simplemente decir, si quiero llegar allá, excluir unas personas por esta, por esta superioridad mora, eh, moral. Yo pienso que tenemos que leer bien la coyuntura social, tenemos que leer bien qué necesita la gente y que la gente necesita esos cambios transformadores no violentos, que necesita realmente un cambio la sociedad, pero que esos cambios hay que hacerlos buenos, regulares, malos. Yo creo que justamente la vida no es de blancos y de negros, sino que tiene muchos grises, tiene muchos matices. Y yo creo que eso tiene una explicación, es decir, yo tengo que poder incluir lo tradicional y lo innovador. Y no por incluir lo tradicional y lo innovador, yo tengo que ser visto o mostrarme como que yo no voy a hacer cambios, que yo voy a hacer más de lo mismo. Yo lo que tengo que mostrar, lo que yo creo que, te, que tiene el centro que mostrar, es yo puedo, con todo lo que hay, bueno y malo, generar una conciliación y esa conciliación, hacerla poderosa y hacerla transformadora. Y, y vigilar, digamos, que no pasen las cosas que venían pasando. Entonces, eh, creo que esa, aunque ese era el discurso, no fue, digamos, creo que al centro le pasó lo que le pasa a uno de papá o de mamá. Que uno echa un discurso a los hijos y luego hace la cosa contraria. Yo, por ejemplo, le digo a mis hijos que no tanto celular, pero vivo pegada del celular yo. Entonces, mis hijos... Obviamente no, no, no entienden que, 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 que no se debe tanto celular, sino que lo que entienden es, tú usas mucho el celular, entonces yo también lo puedo usar. Entonces, la, digamos, la discusión entre los cinco allí eh, y el ataque entre los cinco, yo pienso que afectó muchísimo y que el votante lo cobró. Cobró la incoherencia entre el discurso, un discurso conciliador y, eh, digamos, el, 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 el debate que hubo interno en el centro. Entonces, para mí, el mensaje, digamos, la forma de dar el mensaje es también con el ejemplo eh, y las ideas no son las equivocadas, yo creo que las ideas son las correctas y como ciudadana las veo bien y las veo deseables. Creo que, digamos, tenemos que poder entregar una imagen más de conciliar lo que hay, lo que tenemos y el país es lo perverso y lo angelical, tenemos de todo. Sergio, your thoughts, your thoughts and also your thoughts about this, what I'm calling the dangerous ideas. Well, no, so, so, so on, on what Silvia was just mentioning, you know, I, I think the country wants that to pe for people to lead by example. Um, and the country is expecting a diverse group of people uh, of, that looks like the country. And that's what Petro presented on his party list. That's what Petro presented as his running mate in, in his, you know, very diverse group of, of contenders for his campaign. Uh, that's what the Nuevo Liberalismo 
uh, was putting on their list for Congress. That's what Estamos Listas was putting putting on their list for Congress. That's what Francia Marquez was putting um, in, in the ballot for, for the Pacto Historico. And the center, you know, for all their brilliant ideas, put up five upper middle class males um, to the public and told them this is change. Uh, and the public wasn't buying it. And I think, you know, this is gonna be an opportunity to, to, to change that and to, and to show a, a different vision. I don't think, you know, look, Alejandro Gaviria has 60 points were, were brilliant. I don't know a single person outside of very sophisticated people who read them. Uh, Sergio Fajardo has 64 proposals over 20 pages each on multiple topics. I don't know the first person who's read them. To be completely honest, and I'm a political nerd, right? So, so it's not that they don't have good plans is that the people don't, they, they don't come across. And so I think, Ana Cristina, uh, to, to your point, you know, people want ideas, but more than ideas, people want, you know, to feel empowered, to feel that somebody's gonna take this country and put it in order. Um, and I don't think the center has, for the most part, inspired that. They've inspired sort of a blandness that is, you know, not these two extremes, that that's fine and and perhaps you know as 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 a government that would be the best way to govern but i think it fails as a campaign strategy um and i think that they are they're they're increasingly aware of this um and i hope that they make use of it um in the coming months so sergio if i understood you correctly and in bringing this to santi is it's a question of how you project and the confidence that you give in the getting the whole making people feel empowered, um, less so necessarily about issues or or ideas um, or I mean, combination of both. I'm, hopefully, I'm not mischaracterizing what what you just said, but if I if I have it more or less correct, then then Santi, the question is. Um, how do you put, you know, as the Bible would say, but how do you put new wine in an old bottle? In other words, Sergio Fajardo is what he is for, for better and for worse in terms of how he projects and how he, how he emotes and gives or doesn't give that kind of sensation or feeling that Sergio was just describing. So um, how, how does that happen? I mean, how do these ideas get carried forward that the center has been talking about Obviously, I'm sure you don't think that you can debate 60, you know, 64 priorities or something like that usually means zero priorities. So how do you get that balance right? Or how should Sergio Fajardo get that balance right where he's projecting these ideas? He wants people to get excited about the ideas. And at the same time, he wants them to get excited about who he is and how he can deliver those sensations that Sergio was talking about. I, I do agree that uh, people want leadership and uh, leadership means clarity. It means, you know, understanding the country and prioritizing, you know, and, and have, having clear priorities. That is very difficult to do when you are part of a five man group, which uh, have tensions between them. And, and you want, you have to first, you know, you have to beat these guys. And then you have to think about, you know, the first round. And I believe that this, you know, the, the months that are coming with a new political landscape within the center, because I know that that is going to happen. That means that they will work together some new faces from uh, the Congress list, the winners and the losers will be in front of, of this team. I think that that will bring new blood and that will bring a new energy. Fajardo knows how to lead, but I also, and, 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 and I understand that, I think that he has been a much better, um, you know, uh, governor and the mayor than that what he has done in, you know, elections. And I understand that. I, and, and I know that he understands that. You know, he is used to being in, on top and governing and, uh, and putting the agenda. Well, when you are uh, doing an election, you don't put the agenda. You don't do it anywhere, but much less in Colombia. 
where if every 15 minutes you have something new, you have a terrorist attack, you have a economic proposals which are wild and you have to tackle. So I think that he has that clear and he has definitely has to show leadership with uh, some basic points. Coming back to what Sylvia said, I think that I understand what she's going for, but you have to put a red line somewhere. You have to put a red line somewhere and say, this is not acceptable. Cesar Gaviria, I'm sorry, but he is not, I understand he is the president of the Liberal Party and they have 16 uh, curules uh, and they're an important group. But if you sit down with him, you're basically saying, I am negotiating the future of this country. And that is very clear for me. And there are a lot of other, you know, things that move around Cesar Gaviria, what he has done to Contraloría, for example, Procuraduría, what he is doing with political enemies all around using the organismos de control. So you have to draw a line. And, and I understand that you don't change polit politics from one day to the other. You can do an election and you can look for votes with a lot of different people from the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party. We have done that in Medellin and in Antioquia. When Sergio Fajardo was governor, only five of 125 mayors in all of Antioquia were with him during the election. The rest were with the other parties. But when he was there, he governed with all of them, all of them. The same with the diputados, the same with the concejales. So I think that that is a point, going back to Sergio, that we have to make clear. We can and will have an election where we put red lines, but we look for a very you know, ample country. But when we get to power, we know how to you know, exercise power and we will of course govern with all of the groups which are there. And it is different to negotiate when you are during a campaign than to sit down and say, let's work together to transform this country. And, 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 and that, again, I am not saying this uh, out of theory, that is what happened in Medellin, which began a very deep process of transformation with that type of government. And it happened in Antioquia, which is almost 7 million people, 125 municipalities, very, very, you know, different, um, like this country. So, but the, 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 the real, you know, the real deal is that that has to be known from the start. That has to be known right now during the debates and, and, and Fajardo and the center have to you know, show that they know how to govern. They know and they understand what politics is when you are in government and how to transform a society from institutions, not against institutions. But you know what some people are thinking after Sunday? Many people are thinking that Colombia doesn't have a significant center. That's the idea that many people uh, have now. I want to ask uh, Professor Silvia about that. Do you think that uh, really people, I mean, everywhere people are thinking that there is not a significant center or you think that the center is not significant or how can we erase that idea from people's minds? Yo creo que sí hay un centro significativo en Colombia. Creo que sí lo hay. Eh, y como te digo, creo que las, las, las ideas centrales del centro son muy poderosas. Son muy poderosas porque, 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 digamos, porque van a los focos en que el país necesita intervención. Eh, y creo que ha habido errores en el mensaje, como te digo. Pero yo sí creo que hay un centro significativo. Lo que pasa es que como centro es heterogéneo, es decir, yo no creo que haya un centro en el, en, el, en el punto central, sino que hay un centro derecha y un centro izquierda, y que el riesgo en este momento es que se divida. El riesgo en este momento es que unos salgan corriendo para la izquierda y otros salgan corriendo para la derecha, ideológica, y eh, digamos, esta cosa se polarice nuevamente. 
en, estas dos, en, estas dos, en estos dos extremos en, en, en los que creería yo que la mayoría de los colombianos no se sienten cómodos. Es decir, la, yo pienso que la mayoría de los colombianos no se sienten cómodos en los extremos, sino en los centros, pero que no le pudieron leer, digamos, y no pudieron generar eh, eh, una, una relación de confianza con el centro. Entonces yo sí creo que, que hay que, que, hay que eh, eh, comprender la política colombiana, que hay que darle una lectura a la, a la, a la, digamos, al, al resultado del domingo, que creo que para el centro fue muy negativo, fue muy negativo eh, y pienso que hay que eh, eh, trabajar doble o triple si el centro quiere sacar adelante su proyecto político en este momento, porque, porque lo que veo es que nuevamente estamos, como estábamos en las elecciones pasadas, con la misma polarización, un grupo de ciudadanos votando por lo que cree, pero el grupo mayoritario votando por miedo a lo que no quiere, a lo que no quiere más o a lo que no quiere arriesgar a futuro. Entonces, eh, 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 creo que, creo que, que es, necesaria, es necesario hacer esa negociación y comprender que el país es un país diverso, que en el país hay buenos regulares y malos. Eh, yo, yo, yo no creo que no haya centro. Pero sí creo que hay mucha gente que lo está pensando y que a nadie le gusta irse con el lado perdedor. Es decir, no nos gusta votar por el que creemos que va a perder. Y la sensación que, que siento en la gente después del domingo con los resultados es ¿para qué le vamos a gastar un voto al centro? Eh, si lo que tenemos es que no arriesgar el, 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 en la primera vuelta lo que pensamos que es el deber ser en este momento de extremos. Entonces, digamos, el reto que yo le veo a, al centro en este momento es lograr convencer a la gente en este tiempo tan corto que queda de que, de que el centro sigue siendo, digamos, el centro sigue siendo el representante de esas grandes ideas y de esas ideas poderosas y transformadoras eh, que, que el país necesita. Yo pensaría que tenemos que poner el foco en los mensajes, en los mensajes. Sergio, ¿cuál es tu análisis de esto? I don't think it's just the messages, like Silvia is mentioning. I think it's the way the messages are delivered. Um, I've, been, I've been pleasantly pleased with how Sergio Fajardo has changed on Twitter. Um, I'm not sure it's Sergio Fajardo. And I'll tell you why I'm not sure it's Sergio Fajardo. Because I live in the same building as Sergio Fajardo. He doesn't know who I am. Uh, we've exchanged pleasantries in the um, elevator, but he has no idea who I am. I'm sure if I lived in the same building as Roy Barreras, he would know my wife's birthday. <laughs> he, would, he would be uh, trying to know my dog's name and campaign with me and give me uh, posters of his candidacy and hats and everything. Fajardo, that's not his character. And, and we all know it, right? Um, and unfortunately, Fajardo has two more months to completely change character and he's not going to change character. And so he needs a lot of surrogates to work with him and for him during what's left of the campaign to demonstrate that there are people with fire in their belly who want to make a difference and translate those very powerful ideas that Silvia is, is saying that they have and those 64 position papers that nobody's read into concrete action. And that's their challenge. If they can do that, they stand a chance. But the problem is people are going to vote strategically in the first round and they need to have that strategic vote be for them. That's their challenge. And I'm, I'm sorry, I have to leave because I, I have a meeting in five minutes, but it's been a true pleasure Uh, Santiago, when you're in the building, just knock on the third door, third floor, and <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll meet. Thank you, thank you, Sergio. Thank uh, you, Sergio. Thank you for joining. And so, Santiago, let me just let me just pick pick up on that, um, because uh, you know we, nobody wants to think that that this is just going to be decided on personalities or or energy. Although we all acknowledge that that's important and and and, and ha has a role to play and should have a role to play. But let's go back to the, the ideas and the issues because that's what this series has always been about, low these many 20 or more months, is um, you know, the discourse of, of, as I say, of most of the candidates or all of them 
and the Esperanza was pretty similar. There was some different emphasis on priorities, as you know, right? As we all know. Um, uh, and Sergio Fajardo's priorities have been, it would appear to be what they have always been. I mean, he would always lead as he did in, in, the, in the one hour conversation that we had with him with corruption and education, right? Well, you know, those issues have been worked over a lot by a whole lot of candidates. And he, you know, he may have a more credible um, personal record. I mean, I, I say may because, you know, let, let's say he does have a more credible record and staking out that territory and making it. But it's not clear that those two issues are the ones that are gonna drive people to the polls and get excited about going out to vote for Sergio Fajardo. Maybe we're wrong about that. And I don't, you know, if, I would see no indication that what I just said was, was incorrect. So if, if, and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but what are, despite the issue, the, the, the charisma and, the, and the, the, the fire in the belly issue, what should be, or what would you suggest to, to the center should be the three important issues for the next two months that they have to be hammered that could get people excited about voting for them? What, what, give me three. Well, first of all, he, he will never, you know, go back on education and corruption. It, they're gonna be there because that's what he believes in, really believes in, you know, it's not, uh, something that he wrote one day and said, okay, this is gonna be what I say in public. He basically believes it because he's been in government and he understands it. But, but and I think that you, well, you, you talked to, to him here and you've heard him in some of the debates. Um, he has been talking a lot more about security and he is talking about what Duque has not done, what he is not doing, uh, which I, think is, is important because he has also, he, he has also experience in, 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 in being in front of a government in a very complex territory as Antioquia. Somebody was saying, well, it's not easy to go from Medellin and Antioquia to Colombia. I understand, but Antioquia is very, very complex, you know? And when we were in government, we had four FARC Frentes, two ELN, Bacrim, we had uh, uh, coca plantations, you know, the whole deal. So, so he understands, and he's been talking about much more about security and about integral security, which is something which he connects with crime prevention, human rights, and the peace deal, because he's also talking about that. So that is one thing which is important. Second, he has good experience. And people need to hear what he's going to do to take institutions to the territory. This is a territory which is still 75% without any institution. Maybe the police and the army, but it is clear that that is not, you know, government. That is definitely not, not government. So he has experience and he's been talking a lot more about how to take institutions and opportunities to you know, every corner in Colombia, how to work with the mayors and the governors and how do you, to take you know, uh, the state and the government to the territory. And third, um, we understand and he understands that the economic situation is really very, very complex right now. And it has to do with pensions, it has to do with uh, the deficit, which has to be you know, confronted and basically it has to do with opportunities and employment. And, and that is something that he has worked on. We have a very, very, very powerful economic team. And those are messages that we will have to, and he will have to take to the public during these months. Uh, people are talking about vice presidents, but also negotiations with different uh, parties or negotiation with different, uh, let's say prominent figures, uh, you know, it could be people who are now running uh, for the first round, or it could be other kind of people, just prominent figures. What do you think the possibilities are? Do you think there is room for that kind of negotiation or that uh, door is closed? What, what the, are the options? Uh, Professor Silvia, you go first.
como les decía hace un rato, yo pienso que hay, hay muchas opciones, hay muchas opciones, eh, eh, digamos, eh, inclusive hay varias opciones de centros. Excuse me, can we talk about names? Eh, preferiría no, preferiría no, eh, pero yo sí pienso que, 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 que hay muchas opciones, tanto en la centro izquierda como en la centro derecha, pero cuando oigo, cuando oigo a Santiago decir que hay unas líneas, lo entiendo, entiendo que hay, que hay cosas impresentables, digamos, que hay, hay, hay escenarios en los que uno no quiere estar, pero también siento que... Eh, que, que digamos que el centro tiene esa vocación, tiene que poder unir, tiene que poder unir hasta lo satánico con lo angelical. Por eso yo decía que eh, yo no le cerraría la puerta a las negociaciones, no le cerraría la puerta a ninguna negociación. Yo me comprometería a estar vigilante con la corrupción, me comprometería a cuidar la institucionalidad, eh, porque eso se puede hacer, eso se puede hacer. Fajardo sería el presidente de la república, es decir, en, en un gobierno eh, típicamente presidencial eso es posible, es posible hacerlo. Entonces yo, yo, aunque yo pienso que los extremos nuevamente se empoderaron, que los extremos eh, eh, con sus discursos van a, a, a hacer posible que el centro se divida, ese es el gran riesgo, yo sí creo que si hay negociaciones es posible, es posible que, 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 haya, que haya una oportunidad pero tiene que haberlas y tenemos que dejar de satanizar eh, eh, alguna gente. Así esté impresentable, así esté impresentable. Esa fue de las lecciones que aprendieron los extremos y si se dan cuenta, ya se comenzaron a, 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 a dar esas uniones de lo presentable con lo impresentable. Entonces, yo no digo nombres, pero creo que se entiende. <risa> Santiago, do you want to take a risk? No, I, I, I won't talk about names because I actually don't know about names, but I know that, of course, there has to be negotiations. I understand that um, there has to be a red line and I don't know how to define Satanism in politics, but I do understand there are people here, uh, which definitely does not represent what, not only the center, what a lot of people think politics can be, not should be, can be. And I believe that that is, you know what, that is basically what we have to look for is what is the balance? We have to talk to a lot of people and that it blue, red, you know, but, excuse me, uh, but that uh, has to have, I believe, um, some, some, some red lines uh, because if not, you know, then there are no difference between, you know, the, the extremes and the center if you say, Anybody can come here with any way of doing politics. That, that does not work. That is, you already lost. Because not only people, well, people will say, well, you're exactly the same as them, but you're not even as good as them. Because definitely when you are not in that game, you will not be as good as them because they don't have any, any red line. You know, anything is possible. So Mario Castaño, is the liberal senator and he is going to be i think captured in the next days they don't have any problem with that his votes are there they are tallied whatever it, I, I i hope this does not come uh, uh, through like you know moralism because it, it is not i believe i am a politician i have been in in, in, in campaign i've been counselor and i've won elections i've lost elections And, but I think that there are red lines and, and, and moving between those red lines is basically good politics. And, and, and that, Silvia, you are right about that. Moving between the red lines is good politics. And where are the, the red lines? Well, you have to be clear on that. But there are a lot of good people. There are good parties. There are people who have very good experience. Of course, you have to go out to them. And that is the responsibility of the whole center right now. Fajardo, Gaviria, Amaya, Robledo, all of them, I would say, have to be, you know, doing the list right now and making phone calls and moving because that is, that's what it's all about. And, and, and I understand that you don't do politics with yourself or with your friends. You do it with people who are very different from you. I know that. 
but you have to have things in common, basic things in common, because this country needs, and, and, and I, I will finish with this, this country needs to understand that we are not condemned to politiqueria and clientelismo. That is not something that is natural to politics. That is a decision. It's a decision that you make every day, who you are gonna work with and how you do politics. So I believe that that is you know, the message. And of course, negotiations right now, very open, very clear, as Silvia says, with red lines on what we don't do, we will never do this, we will never go there, and these are our postures and our programs. That's how it's gonna work. Let it's me try very... my luck. Let, let me try my luck again, again, just <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's talk about one name that is a clean name, and she was a star on Sunday, but she's more in the left. And that's Francia, Francia Marquez. She's more in the left. Do you think that there is a possibility of looking for Francia? Because Pedro, I mean, he hasn't been the nicest person with her. Do you think that there is a possibility of looking for Francia Marquez to go and campaign with you? I mean, with the center. I hope that there will be. I, I think that she's a, a, a very important woman right now. I think that she made a very strong point. Um, I, 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 I think that we would have to, uh, well, there, there would have to be a sit down. I don't know if she is open to that. You know, she's been very clear that even though she has very, very big di differences with Petro, that that is where she feels most at home. And she says that the big change has to come, uh, but I don't think that she would be off, off the table because I, I believe that she's a very important politician right now. I believe that her life story and what she's doing is important. Uh, I wouldn't have any problem with that, but I don't know if she would be you know, open to that. But there are a lot of other people from the left or the right that have to be summoned and that we have to talk to. Okay, um, we need to... <laughs> We need to, we've, we've gone a little bit over and I, I appreciate our panelists staying with us and, uh, and Gloria, our interpreter as well. But there's just one, other, I wanna play off of both that and this is for both of you to answer. And this ties into, trying to tie into, again, going back to the ideas, Ana Cristina, I keep trying to go back to the ideas and the themes, but as well as the, the you know, the, um, the, ins the inside political play. So maybe see, we can try and tie this together. Um, if I understood correctly an article that I read, I don't know if it was this morning or yesterday morning in Sia Vasia. The story apparently is, is that, and we, well, we don't usually get into names, we have a little bit today, so let's do it. Um, Cesar Gavidia's points for support are maintaining the institutional integrity of the central bank the, the APS is the, you know, the, the medical system, no re-election uh, and a guaranteed basic income. I may be missing one. That sounds like a perfectly comfortable platform for the center, no? I, I ask uh, Sylvia, I, that shouldn't be a problem for, for I, I know there's issues of not wanting to compromise on other things, but if that's the basic package, that is being presented, and I can say that in an extremely naive way. Uh, if that's if that's the package, Sylvia, you, you might think that's a pretty good deal to have, right? Yo creo que que tiene cosas que sí, cosas que no. El paquete el paquete se puede se puede adornar, se puede adornar y se le pueden poner y quitar unas cositas. Unas le sobran y unas le faltan. Pero sí, creo que, creo que el, paquete, el paquete me vendría bien. Ok, thank you. Santi, you have the last word. I know you're going to tell me there's other baggage that comes with it, but let's, no. let's, let's take, but no. wait, hold on, but let's take, because there's actually one issue that came up in that list, and I'll let you go. I'm going to give you the last word because you're on the campaign trail. But the concept of a guaranteed basic income, which has been tossed around a lot in Latin America, particularly coming out of COVID, but I don't remember, and Ana Cristina, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember any real conversation about that coming up in any of the interviews we did. Is that not an issue that, that could be put on the table now and people find 
very, very interesting and something that would sort of drive people to get excited about this? Yeah, and, 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 and Fajardo and uh, Alejandro Gaviria have moved it. Yeah, Alejandro and, has, that's correct. And, and Fajardo has also done it. He, oh, okay. he even okay. tweeted today that Petro was, you know, using his, his Fajardo's proposal as his own, you know? So okay. that, I think that that is not the problem. And, and with Cesar Gaviria, come on, he will say anything, anything. Whatever, you know, I don't believe him. He, 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 he tells somebody, listen, go through those 64 things or those 60 others and give me a very, very nice list so I can talk to the country and I will go out as like, wow, this guy still has it, you know. It's Cesar Gaviria, you know, he's, he's, in, he's in business. So I wouldn't, you know, go very deep on that. I think that he will go any which way, maybe, He's trying to get Petro to, you know, temper down a bit so he can go over there because I think he's a good politician. He sees that Petro, like Sergio says, is 60% on his way of being president of Colombia. He has always been with the, with the presidents. Duque, Uribe, every which one of them, Santos, he has no problem going with Petro, but maybe he said, okay, let's temper down Petro a bit. If I can do this, I will be the guy who moves Petro to the center and I will go with him with my liberal party and my 16 seats in, in, in Congress. So, well, he's playing and he's a player, uh, but I wouldn't believe you know, what he, he says or writes down. Fair enough, and I, and I do apologize. It's clear, I, I, I heard Alejandro talk a lot about that I, and, but I didn't remember Sergio talking about that. So, so um, that's um, bad on my part, but yeah, it's, it, seems, it seems like a, 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 an issue that might catch fire if it were not surrounded by 59 other, or you know, 63 other issues, but you, it, the campaign would, and, and it, all the candidates would know theoretically what issues um, technically could catch fire. Um, I, we're way over, Ana Cristina. I, I think, unless there's anything else that you think we, this is not the last time we're going to be doing this for sure. Uh, and we will be seeing all of you again. <laughs> Hopefully, you will indulge us again. Um, so we don't have to get it all in today. But I think it was, we, I think Ana Cristina and I would both agree that given that we've been trying to do with bringing out the ideas and what the center has been trying to talk about, whether or not those eyes were ideas were still alive and they were resonating with, with the voters out there. Maybe they hadn't as much the first round, maybe they will um, this, uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, on Sunday with the consultas and the legislative, but you know, the hope is uh, more decisions will be made on what these issues are all about. And, uh, and, uh, and obviously the center would like to see that they, they get decided on the issues that they've been pushing. Uh, I think with that, Ana Cristina, if there's, anything else maybe we should close today's session yeah no i think this was a very good start and uh from now on i think we have to be very careful ken and all the listeners just because every day the right is going to try to move fico to the center and the left will try to do the same with Petro. So they will try to moderate the discourse. They will try to capture that center voters. So I really think that right now it's a moment to be very careful to all, all what we hear from these candidates. But I think that this conversation was a very good start. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anaki. Santi, thank you very much. Sylvia, thank you for joining us from Barranquilla. We didn't even, get, we didn't even have time to get the from you the sentiment of what's going on in the coast but we will come back to that uh, because that like every geographic certain geographical areas in colombia are very very key and interesting to discuss uh, even in their even in their own microcosm so with all that thank you thank you for listeners for staying with us the video of this event will be available on our website tonight tomorrow at the latest ccacanada.com please uh, if you're not part of our mailing list please sign up, you can do that as well on our website. Have a good rest of your day to everybody. And thank you, Gloria Mejia, our wonderful interpreter sitting in Medellin. Bye, everybody. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye, right. thank you.